You know, I thought I had this measured out properly, but obviously I was wrong. Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashi Karen, and welcome back for my February 2020 plan with me. Before we get into today's setup, as per usual, we're just going to see how January is going. So as you'll remember from my last monthly plan with me, my theme for January was black and white zen tangles. Although it wasn't my first choice for a theme, I did certainly enjoy going a little bit more monochromatic this month, and really just going back to tracking things in more simplistic ways. Having a flip through though, we started off with my quote page and cover page. We had my monthly log and gratitude log. My habits tracker and to-do list. For the habits tracker, I also put in this little piece of paper that had my key on it, just because I was tracking a couple of things that I don't typically track. We then had my social media scheduler and a notes page. And then we're into my weeklies. Each of my weeklies for this month have been based around the same elements, just arranged in different ways. Because it's January 25th at the moment, and this weekly doesn't start till the 27th, this one hasn't really been used. But as it's going to be the first week back at school, I'm sure this will be plenty full come the end of the month. After this, I also included a page for a month in review, which I haven't quite finished setting up, and I'm not going to fill this in probably until next weekend. And then after this, we're into February. Handing you off to the time lapse now, but just a reminder that any of the equipment I use in today's setup is linked in the description box below. My theme for February is those old school pixelated video games. For my splash page in particular, I didn't want this to be associated with any one game, so I decided for it to include just Feb 2020 in a little speech bubble, and then on the left hand side I wrote start. Although I was considering doing a more elaborate quote page, because there's a little bit more decoration in this setup than I would usually do, even if it is just boxes. I felt that having something more simplistic for the quote page was just fine. Also with February being pretty much the start of the school year, really we start on the 27th of January, but that's close enough to February, I figured that the word start was a good way to show that new beginning. As per usual, before going in with pen on this spread, I went in first with a pencil to sketch out where everything was going to go. A slight issue that I ran into on the right hand page though, was that I didn't actually line up the centre of the page properly, so everything was off by one square. Thankfully this didn't have any terrible ramifications, but it does mean that at some point I had to go in and redraw all of my pencil lines. Initially I thought I wasn't going to have to and that I could just wing it and draw everything one square over, but this proved to be a little bit too difficult for my brain to handle, so I did go in and erase those lines and redraw them. Always better to make sure that your guidelines are in the right place, rather than trying to remember where they're supposed to be. The font that I'm using for all of my titles and headers in this setup is just your generic pixelated lettering style. This one I just found by doing a quick search for pixelated letters on Google. There are a couple of different variants that come up, but I decided to go with one that was fairly straightforward. Once the outlining of my cover page was done, it was then time to go and colour it in. Of course, I decided to use the world's most impractical pen to do this. So on the left hand page, I ended up using the Papermate Liquid Flare Pen, mostly because I love the quality of the black ink, but also because I wanted to try it out in the Archer and Olive and see how the paper held up. To report back, it held up just fine, but this did take way too long, so for the second page I decided to use my Brush Tip Pit Artist Pen. The nice part about the pixelated styles of the decoration in this setup is that you can use the dock grid to give yourself even sized boxes that you can build up into the decoration you want to include. Of course, in some of my decoration, I wanted my pixels to be smaller than the 5x5mm of my journal. But at least for my cover page and the main headers on each of the pages that follow, I was able to use the dock grid to do this really easily. With my cover page done, it's then on to my monthly log. For this one, I themed it around Pac-Man. 
So I've got the little ghosties, the little cherries, of course, Pac-Man is there as well. And then the little gems or whatever it is he's supposed to be eating when he's waka 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 ing around the board. Okay, I just looked it up. They're supposedly called pack dots. Again for this one, I went in with my pencil first to sketch out all of my decoration because I really wanted to make sure to get these ones right. On this spread, a pixel for me was one third of a regular square in my journal. So whatever a third of five millimeters is, that's how big they were. Along with drawing the decoration of the ghosties and the cherries and the Pac-Man, I also decided to make the grid of my calendar decorative as well, by drawing this out of pixels to kind of represent the maze that Pac-Man goes through. This was very time consuming, and I probably could have done it a better way, but I decided to go in with my black pen first to draw all the outlines, and then go in with my Tombos to colour everything in. Otherwise, I mean, how would you be able to differentiate between Blinky, Pinky, Inky, and Clyde, which are our Pac-Man ghosties? I'll give you three guesses as to which one Pinky is. <laughs> Just for context, this spread in particular took an hour and 45 minutes from first touch of the pen to flipping over to the next page. I feel it's really important to let you guys know this, especially for any of you guys who are just starting out, because with the time-lapse videos that we have on YouTube, it's really hard to get an appreciation for how much time these things actually take. Even for me, who's been doing bullet journaling for, what, three years now? Watching the videos of people doing the amazing calligraphy that's all perfectly uniform and in line and with the gorgeous flourishes, I need to check myself sometimes and remind myself that this stuff's being sped up. Sure, there are probably some people who can letter that quickly, but for the vast majority of us, it does take a lot of time, a lot of patience, and of course a lot of practice. That's what I think is kind of nice about this pixelated theme. Given the appropriate amount of time, most people could achieve this. Whether it is just sticking with the kind of bigger designs where you do use your dot grid, or if you're trying something a little bit more intricate like the doodles I have on this page. It really is just squares, and putting squares next to each other in certain ways. And don't for a second think that I did any of this stuff without reference images. All of this rambling really just to say, do not compare your start to somebody else's middle. That was one of the first things that I actually wrote on the second page of my first bullet journal. Because even at that point, I was getting a little bit overwhelmed by all of the amazing creativity in our community. And I don't want that to be overwhelming for you guys. I want you guys to use that as a way to foster your own creativity in your journals. A way for you guys to inspire yourself to try new things. And I for sure think that this theme in particular is certainly achievable for our newbies out there. You don't need to be quite as anal as I am and go in with a ruler for every single piece of line work. I know that things certainly took longer because I was using a ruler. I just really like straight lines. <laughs> with the monthly log done though, it was onto my habits and steps trackers. I kind of missed having an overall steps tracker for the month in January, so I wanted to bring it back for February. By this point, although I'd made a couple of minor stuff ups, like extending a line a little too far or maybe colouring in the wrong section, those mistakes were relatively easy to fix. But of course I decided to go in for a real doozy on my steps tracker and only actually leave enough space for 28 days instead of 29. Sadly, I only realised this when I actually wrote the 28 in and then I get out my ruler to check because I just couldn't believe that I would have measured it up wrong. But I did. To fix that one, I just ended up putting the 29 at the top of the tracker. Not really ideal, but I wasn't going to try and cover up or go over all of the numbers that I'd already put in. As strange as it is, having the 29 at the top will be fine. In terms of the decorative elements that I had on each of these pages, the games that I decided to use were Snake for the Steps Tracker, where the length of the snake indicates how many steps I'd done, and for the habits tracker, I went with Space Invaders. So I had an individual Space Invader doodle for each of six habits that I'll be tracking. At this stage, I haven't decided what those habits are, and in terms of the amount of space the Space Invaders take up, that is bigger than 29 squares. 
So initially I considered combining squares to make it so that I only had 29 spaces to fill in. But I really wanted the spaces for each day to take up the same amount of space. Instead what I did was that of the 46 spaces that the Space Invader takes up, I went and coloured in 17 of those squares so that I only had 29 left. Although sadly my phone decided to randomly cut out in the middle of my filming. Wow. Rude. This meant that the section I ended up colouring in kind of makes it look like the Space Invaders have little sunglasses on. With those two trackers set up though, it was on to the next two. So on this spread I have my moods tracker and my social media scheduler. I did make double sure that I had enough space for all 29 days before I started numbering on this one. Somehow I managed to measure the social media scheduler up correctly, but not the steps tracker. Measure twice, draw once always. Although the social media page doesn't have any specific relation to any games, my mood tracker for February is related to Tetris, where each of the different Tetris pieces represents a different mood. So far I've managed to think of six different moods, so annoyed, exhausted, down, content, pleased, and meh. I really need one more positive mood, but I'm not too sure what I'm going to do for that one yet. If you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear about them. I foresee two main challenges with this tracker, one of which is getting the motivation to actually fill it in consistently, and the other one which is the playing of Tetris. Personally, I love Tetris, so I'm up for this challenge. But I essentially want to make it so that this tracker is filled in as if I was actually playing. So as if the pieces for each consecutive day were actually falling down and can only be positioned in places that they would realistically be able to get to if I was playing in real life. As per every month though, I am really looking forward to using these spreads. I think that the pixelated game theme is super cute. And I'm hoping that on my weeklies I can do more of those pixelated doodles for decoration. I'm curious to know what you guys have for your theme this month coming. I know quite a few people go for Valentine's Day or hearts or rose themes. And really I feel like I should do one of those. One day. But if you wanted to share your theme in the comments below, I would love to hear them. Alrighty, so we have my cover page. My monthly log. Habits and steps trackers. And then my mood tracker and social media scheduler. Thank you for watching team, if you liked today's video please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up and if you wanted to see more from me feel free to go check out one of my other videos. Until next time, bye!